It's no secret that Sly 3 Honor Among Thieves is one of my favorite games of all time. And if it is a secret, well, Sly 3 Honor Among Thieves is one of my favorite games of all time. But when I went to play it on the PlayStation 3 recently, I found that my DualShock 3 was breathing its last few breaths and simply wouldn't cut it. Enter the Retrofighters Defender Bluetooth Edition, a controller from Retrofighters that's marketed primarily for full PlayStation 3 functionality with additional compatibility for PlayStation 4 and PC. Is this finally the th reliable third-party controller that you're looking for? We'll talk about that and much more, including battery life, input lag, and some odd firmware quirks. Starting off with the unboxing, it's nothing particularly special. I bought my controller off of Retrofighter's official Amazon store for $54.99 USD plus tax, so there was a box within the box. Inside we get the controller itself just laying there, a short 40 inch or 100 centimeter USB Type-C cable with Retrofighter's branding, and a quick start instruction manual which talks about the button layout and switching between D input and X input modes while on PC. More on that later. Unfortunately, since Retrofighter's website serves more to market the controller than to provide any documentation or support for it, I found myself heavily relying on this instruction manual, which I discovered is quite paltry in its documentation, but I'll discuss it later in the video. Looking at the controller itself, up top we have a USB Type-C port that is used for charging the controller as well as pairing it to devices. Flanking its side is a button that's supposedly used for firmware updates, it's called the screenshot button, but it doesn't really take screenshots. That's a separate function for a separate button. On the other side is of the Type-C port is this little button here known as the punch button, which I'll touch on shortly. The controller also has a turbo button here where that lets you reconfigure a button such that when you hold that button, it simulates repetitive presses of that button. For example, in Days Gone, the circle button toggles the crouch. Once I hold turbo plus circle for a couple seconds, now if I hold the circle button, it'll simulate the circle button being pressed repeatedly, so the crouch is toggled on and off. If I want to clear it, I can just hold the clear plus circle button here, and then it'll clear the circle button functionality and it'll behave as normal. Similarly, that punch button that I mentioned earlier can toggle the circle button being held without me having to touch the controller at all. And then to clear it, you just hold the punch button and the circle button again to bring it back to normal. In terms of ergonomics and general feeling of the controller, I really like it. It comes in at 185 grams, which is quite light and very similar to the DualShock 3, which I found to be very good. The materials that Retrofighters used here are quite comfortable too. On the front is this smooth, almost soft touch plastic, and on the back is this grippy surface that is not very intrusive, but still left my hands feeling very confident conf while gripping the controller. I'd describe the back to be very similar to the DualSense if you're familiar with that controller. The buttons are pretty good as well too. They get the job done but are nothing eventful. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to test the pressure sensitive nature of these buttons, but Spawnwave did report that these work very well, so that's good to hear. My main issue was with the D-pad. I found myself accidentally double tapping in a direction every once in a while. This was especially common when navigating the PS3 and PS4 menus where I'd accidentally moved two squares instead of one. It didn't bother me with the games that I played, but if you play games that heavily use the D-pad, I'd be a little careful with this. One of my initial concerns was accidentally pushing two directions uh, when the intention was to push one. While I still think this is possible, I didn't experience this in practice. The trigger buttons are decent with nothing to really complain about. Moving on to device specific compatibility, I'll start off with the PlayStation 3. This is the primary use case that Retrofighters has been marketing, and rightfully so. The Defender BT performs admirably on PlayStation 3. There are two things that most third party controllers always have trouble with, turning on the PS3 from the controller and accessing the XMB with the home button. Both functions work flawlessly on the Defender BT. More importantly, however, is that the Defender BT is recognized in the Sly Cooper Trilogy remasters on PS3, which for whatever reason don't work with any other controllers, including a DualShock 4 or a DualSense. This is an automatic win for the Defender BT in my books. The wins keep stacking up when it comes to 6-axis motion controls too. They work very well. All in all, this is a very good controller for the PS3. There are a couple minor issues I have though. The first one is the controller's analog sticks, which are extremely sensitive after powering on the controller, but this always resolved itself a couple minutes later. Just an odd behavior, I guess. The second issue is the poor relative input lag compared to other mainstream controllers. Using a slow motion camera, I recorded the time it took from my fully depressed attack button to when the attack animation appeared on screen in Sly Cooper Thieves in Time. 
I then normalize the results to be relative to the defender BT when it's wired. Please keep in mind that these are relative values. For example, if we look at the Defender BT's Bluetooth results, it can be interpreted as being 11.8 milliseconds slower than the Defender BT's wired results. Similarly, all of the contro other controllers that were tested here performed faster than the Defender BT. However, while this data is insightful, it loses its meaning if the game you're trying to play is compatible with only one of these controllers, like the aforementioned Sly Cooper trilogy. Do note that my DualShock 3 was inoperable, so I couldn't do any testing on this, which is why it's absent in the graphs. Speaking of DualShock 3, I want to briefly mention that while the Defender BT is a solid option for the PlayStation 3, it's not a complete DualShock 3 replacement as it's not compatible with the PlayStation TV. Just something to let you know. Moving on to PlayStation 4 compatibility, I would describe this controller to be a good backup to the DualShock 4, but you'll be missing out on some things if it's your primary controller. If we compare the Defender BT directly against the DualShock 4, we can see that the Defender is missing a few things, namely the touchpad and the built-in speaker, as well as the headphone jack that the DualShock 4 has. But the Retrofighter still is able to maintain some screenshot and some touchpad functionalities. The turbo button here acts as the touchpad click and the select button doubles as the screenshot button. Quick side note though, none of this was mentioned in any documentation I could find for the controller. This was simply found through raw testing. A key thing to note is that the turbo button can only emulate a touchpad click or a touchpad hold. That is to say, if the game you're playing requires more gestures like touchpad swipes, the Defender BT will simply not be able to perform those actions. The PlayStation 4 also shows a little warning when starting the game if the Defender BT isn't fully able to replicate the DualShock 4. Additionally, because the Defender BT doesn't have the speaker that the DualShock 4 has, any games that utilize the DualShock 4 speaker will be a little less free feature rich when using the du uh, Defender BT. One minor note I want to mention is when I was testing the Defender BT, the vibration was at 100% instead of the more granular levels that a video game might use. So in something like Marvel Spider-Man, the vibration was at 100% whenever you were web swinging, which became extremely irritating. It's just super strong. And it's not like, it's missing the subtleties that the DualShock 4 vibration had. So instead of like being a little more particular of where exactly to vibrate in the controller, it's, I think it's just running off like one single motor and vibrating the entire controller that way. Which, <laughs> you'll feel it and it does not feel comfortable. Uh, especially in a game like this, which uses vibration quite a bit for immersion. Like, oh uh, boy. I don't know if you can see it. I mean, maybe you can hear it. I don't know. It's pretty audible for me. But man. However, when I used the controller for Days Gone, the vibration issue seemingly went away and was at the expected levels. That said, the vibration does feel quite strong in Marvel Spider-Man, especially when I go back and forth between the DualShock 4 and Defender BT. And unfortunately, in Spider-Man's case, there are no in-game vibration options, which might make this game unplayable for some with the Defender BT. The input lag of this controller is quite poor. I measured the input lag delay between a button press and an attack animation in Infamous Second Son. As we can see, the best case scenario, the Defender BT is 14.1 milliseconds slower than the DualShock 4, and at worst it's 20.9 milliseconds slower. Again, the Defender BT is a good backup in case your DualShock 4 breaks down, but it can't match the original. Before I close out the PS4 section, I want to highlight that just like for the PlayStation 3, after the Defender BT has been connected to the PS4, it can wirelessly turn on the PS4 as well. Before this review goes downhill, I want to touch on battery life because it is, quite frankly, exceptional, if a tad buggy in its reporting. Retrofighters advertises this controller to have a 10 hour battery life, and my testing handily exceeded that number. On the PlayStation 3, the Defender BT lasted a little over 23 hours before the PS3 reported it going from 3 bars to 2 bars. That said, I found the battery life reporting to be quite buggy. There was a span of about an hour where the PS3 would alternate between 2 bars and critical battery level, leading to constant critical battery warnings. This became a bit intrusive to gameplay and may require a firmware fix from Retrofighters. By the end of my Last of Us playthrough at 27.8 hours, the controller was still at 2 bars. 
Oddly enough, the controller went from 2 bars to critical level at around 30 hours, but then stayed at the critical level for 5 more hours before the controller started to disconnect from the PS3. At this point, I determined the, the test to be complete. Overall, the controller lasted 35 hours, which is remarkable. On PlayStation 4, I wasn't able to complete the test because I wanted to get this video out at a reasonable time, but I played a little over 10 hours of Days Gone, and the controller is still sitting at 3 bars. Color me impressed. I should also note that the Defender BT has a very aggressive sleep time of 5 minutes of inactivity, presumably to save battery life. However, in my graphs, I was actively using the controller the entire time. This is phenomenal battery life and an impressive win for Retro Fighters. Additionally, the controller took about 2 hours to charge from nearly empty to full. Unfortunately, I have to talk about PC, because Retro Fighters advertises this on PC. I say unfortunately because getting the Defender BT working on PC is an inconsistent mess with nearly zero documentation supporting it. First, I plugged in the controller into my computer's USB port and my computer picked it up as a wireless controller, and Steam recognized it as a DualShock 4. Okay, fair enough, except for the fact that it was spotty in Steam and RPCS3. I got it working in Rocket League, but there was no vibration, and RPCS3 detected it specifically as an SDL device with the start and select buttons reversed. Weird. In this mode, the analog sticks had almost no dead zone, which meant that even the slightest tap could send the sticks into full motion. But the story doesn't end there. After I disconnected and reconnected the controller a few times, yes, a few times, the controller was recognized as an Xbox 360 controller. What? Like, I don't get how this controller was recognized as a completely different device after just a few disconnects and reconnects. Anyway, when I was in Xbox 360 mode, Steam recognized it as such, and it worked properly in Rocket League and in RPCS3 as an X input device. Then I followed Retro Fighter's instructions and switched the controller to D input mode by pressing and holding the home button. At this point, it was picked up as an XD gamepad. Steam picked it up as a PS3 controller, but I couldn't get it configured properly in Steam because it disconnected and reconnected when I exited Steam input. That said, RPS CS3 did pick it up as an SDL controller. Okay, so the controller is spotty on PC, but wait. There's one more possible mode. After spending a few days trying to figure out what the hell all these PC modes meant, I put my computer to hibernate to get some rest. I turned on my computer the next morning when the controller was still plugged in, and somehow the controller got set up as a pro controller, specifically one with the Nintendo vendor name. So if you're counting, this controller has four possible modes it could be in, and you have absolutely no control or idea of which one it'll be. Okay, maybe Windows is the issue, I don't know. Well, too bad, because this controller doesn't work on Steam Link and it doesn't work on Steam Deck either. It's not working. Somehow it's picked up. The two LEDs are here though. I don't know why. So what we're gonna try doing is we're gonna try disconnecting the controller. So for some reason, those two LEDs are blinking. Uh, I don't know why exactly. Power this guy off. Hold that for five seconds. Okay, now we'll take our little Type-C cable, plug it in to here. Okay, we are in... I'm guessing charging mode for PS4. I think that's what the thing is, but Steam Deck still isn't picking it up, so... It's unfortunate. Um... Just for posterity, here are the input lag numbers for when I got the controller working on PC. It's not as bad as the Stadia and DualShock 4 controllers, but the connectivity issues easily outweigh whatever input lag wins the Defender BT has. In case this isn't obvious by now, the controller is bad on PC. Not great, not meh, it's bad. These kinds of hoops are things that should have absolutely been ironed out well before sale, and it shouldn't be the responsibility of a paying customer to figure out what the absolute f any of this means. Retrofighters, I'm speaking directly to you if you're watching this. If you're going to advertise a controller for PC use, you have to nail it, and it shouldn't be this difficult to nail it. Otherwise, you shouldn't be advertising this controller for PC use. In this, this day and age, where the Call of Duty step-siblings have 
controllers that are seamless on Windows, there's no excuse for a controller marketed for PC to trip and fall this hard. Maybe something like a selector switch would help alleviate the modes that this controller is trying to juggle, like on the 8-Bit Do Pro 2. Either way, do better, Retrofighters. All right, PC rant aside, what do I think of this controller overall? Well, as I mentioned before in this video, I think this is a really good PS3 controller and a pretty decent PS4 controller. If you're like me and your DualShock 3 is breaking down, I can easily recommend this as a replacement as long as you're playing on PS3 and not on PS TV. If you're looking for a DualShock 4 replacement, the Defender BT is pretty good, but I'd still try to snag a used or a refurbished DualShock 4 instead to guarantee that you'll have all of the features of a DualShock 4 available to you. If you're looking for a PC option, look elsewhere, as I wouldn't even recommend this controller as a backup option for PC. You'd have a much better time with any of the controllers that I compared this to in my review. With all of that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. Please comment down below with any questions and feedback you may have, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. If you're looking for a PC option, look elsewhere. That was my DualShock 4. Great.